Good morning, guys, and happy Sunday. Um, so today we're at the soccer field. Um, Stanley is playing like a pickup soccer uh, match. I had this weekend off, so I decided to come and watch him play. So I'll be cheering off from the sidelines. Um, hopefully the sun comes out a little bit. It's a little chilly out here, but not too cold. <laughs> Good job. Thanks. <laughs> this is a tired man right here. <laughs> Good morning, guys. It is Monday, uh, the next day. I just got to the hospital. It is day one of my internal medicine rotation. So today is pretty much orientation. It starts at nine o'clock. It's gonna end a little bit later in the afternoon. Um, this is the last rotation of the year and it's a 12 week rotation. So I'll be on this one until June. But yeah, even though this is a super long rotation, the longest one, um, we have internal which is 12 weeks. The other, one are, the other rotations are either eight weeks or six weeks. Um, but yeah, even though it's a long one, I'm happy to be ending with internal medicine. Today is the longest orientation day I have ever had. It's 6.30 and we're just now finishing our day. Pretty exhausting day. I got some textbooks to take and I'm headed home. So like I mentioned earlier, um, internal is a 12 week rotation at my school. We have four weeks of ambulatory medicine. So that's outpatient clinic um, with different subspecialties like gastroenterology, pulmonology, hematology, neurology. So we have four weeks of that. And then the other two months are um, inpatient medicine. So we're in the hospital on the wards. And so um, everybody has that schedule, but it's a variation of where you're gonna be. So for my two months of inpatient, one of those months is at the main hospital, and then the other month is at the VA. So the VA, you have a tougher uh, tougher workload because with internal, you're on call every three days at the VA, and at the main hospital, you're on call every five days. So when you're on call, you're the responsible admission team. So if a patient comes to the emergency department, you get a consult, and if they have to be admitted, you're the team that takes care of that. So the schedule for being on call is from 7 a.m. till about 7 or 8 p.m. in the evening, or until you get a couple of admissions, your attending or resident may let you leave earlier than that, but typically it's a 12-hour shift. And when the inpatient, you're required to work six days a week, so you'll typically have one day off um, on the weekend and yeah that's yeah that's a tough schedule six days a week for two months um ambulatory is nice because it's monday through friday five days a week we have half days in there um on fridays um so you can definitely get a lot of studying done on um ambulatory and i start off with that first and then i finish with the two months of inpatient so yeah today was just the overview of the rotation and then we did um like some review and some practice questions and um we have our first we have weekly quizzes the first quiz is actually due tonight at midnight um just a 10 question quiz so i'm going to work on that later this evening and then we also need to do some practice questions for the cardio section because tomorrow we're going to be having um a review topic on cardio and then we start at our clinic sites on wednesday Good morning guys, it's Wednesday, it's the first day of clinic, um, it's about a 40 minute drive for me today and I'm at an outpatient, uh, outpatient general internal medicine clinic and it's at Kaiser.
people are just absolutely horrible somebody hit my car and ran and this looks absolutely awful so i called the police and i am patiently waiting for them to come here you go thank you you're welcome have a great day you too much needed I was definitely not expecting my day to end that way um people that hit and run are just awful like, I cannot understand that I mean they probably didn't have insurance or they probably were just a sucky person either way I mean it's pretty messed up but it is what it is at this point um yeah, thankfully I was in the car. Um, you know, thankfully I wasn't hurt or anything. Um, thankfully I have money to fix this. Um, and thankfully I, thankfully I have insurance. Like, people are out here driving without insurance, acting reckless. Just don't understand it. But yeah, I am not gonna let this mo uh, ruin my mood. I am annoyed, but I have work to do. I mean, this could have just messed up my whole day, but I honestly just do not have time for that. So I have a lot of studying to do when I get home. Um, and yeah, I plan to go home to my parents' house this weekend anyways, but I definitely have to do that now to take my car to the mechanic and get fixed. So again, um, count your blessings, you know? Because a situation can always be worse than can always be worse than what it is. So overall, I had a pretty good day um, with my first day of clinic. I was at what you call an advanced care center. Um, this is the first time I've heard of this kind of practice model. And what it is is a step above an urgent care center, but a step below an emergency department. And so they take um, pretty acute patients, and it's. For the patient's benefit, it saves them a lot of money because it's not going to be as expensive as an emergency department visit. So today we saw um, a couple of patients with chest pain, a couple of patients um, with pneumonia. And so um, I, my, my classmate was with me. My classmate and I were both working with an internal medicine physician, but there were also um, emergency medicine doctors that worked in this advanced care uh, center. And so um, we're only spending two days at this clinic. Um, so today, tomorrow, and I actually have Friday off. And then next week, I'm going to be um, moving through some different, um, some other subspecialties. But the best thing that you can have during your third year is a great preceptor and a great teacher. Like, you can tell the difference between a good and a bad precept preceptor. And they really make a difference on your learning and your overall learning experience. Like today, we were... Um, Today and tomorrow, we're pretty fortunate to be paired with the great preceptor. Like, he taught us just learning so much in one day of clinic, you know, pointing out some things that we should be looking at, you know, how to create the differential and work up and plan. So, definitely some um, valuable teaching lessons today. So, not only is it important to get that hands on clinical experience, um, after that, you know, you come home, you read up on it, you do practice questions, and that kind of solidifies everything and puts everything together for you. Um, and speaking of practice questions, um, I want to tell you guys about AMBOSS, which is a study resource for first and second year medical students. And I can't forget about the third years. Um, they also have questions for third years to help us do the shelf exams and to help us prepare for um, Step 2 CK. So AMBOSS has over 4,000 questions in their QBank. Um, and again, it covers um, Step 1 type questions. It covers Step 2 style questions. And with each question that you have, there's going to be um, the explanation with it. They're thorough, but they're also concise. And so with any QBank, you want to make sure they have great explanations so that you're actually learning from the questions that you're doing. So it's great to see questions um, from many different viewpoints, you know, it's great to have multiple QBanks per se. So, you know, most people use UWorld, but it's also nice to have a companion QBank. So AMBOSS can be that for you if you're preparing for step one, as well as step two, you know, throughout your uh, throughout third year, you're taking shelf exams and AMBOSS has questions that cater to specific shelf exams. A lot of my classmates used AMBOSS during the surgery rotation. They felt that it was great preparation for that shelf exam. So on March 30th, which is the day that this video is going to be released, AMBOSS is launching the National Step 1 Self-Assessment Week. For all the students out there preparing for Step 1, you know how important practice questions are, you know how important engaging where you stand is just to get, you know, um, 
a reference point to see where your weak areas are and to see where your strong areas are. All right, so I want to make sure I'm not missing any of the details of this self-assessment week. So from March 30th through April 7th, anybody preparing for step one can get a free self-assessment from AMBOSS. And what's included with that is a three-digit step one report so you can kind of see and gauge where you are with your preparation. Um, it'll give you a national percentile to compare you to where other students are who are taking this exam. And then it'll give you a personalized analysis of uh, specific topics and recommendations about where you should focus your studying. So it's four blocks with 40 questions each. It's going to be time, so it's going to simulate the actual step one experience. Um, after you're done with each block, it'll give you the right and wrong answers. And then two weeks later, you'll get your overall full report with your estimated step one score, your percentile rank, um, and then your strong areas and your weak areas. So, I mean, this is an amazing um, practice exam right here, an amazing opportunity just to see where you stand in your step one preparation and get you ready for the next level. So I'm going to leave a link to the self-assessment in the description box. You can access it from there and it's going to be available from March 30th through April the 7th. All right, I am losing the natural light in here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. But guys, definitely take advantage of that. I always try to bring you guys the best resources and the knowledge that I have to help you. Um, you know, if I had access to this during my step one prep, I would have definitely utilized it. But like I mentioned, I have a lot of studying to get to this evening. So I'll see you guys tomorrow parked all the way in the back today. Because I don't have time for the shenanigans. <laughs> but I am here at my second day at Kaiser. Um, today is actually going to be a shorter day because we have class. So we leave here about 3.30 to get to afternoon class on campus. All right, I am done. It was another uh, good day at clinic. It's about three o'clock and I'm about to head to campus. We have um, our fundamentals of medicine class. I think today we're reviewing stuff like um, CVs, personal statements, and applying to residency. Before I head to campus, um, I just want to take a minute to recognize my talented friend Chris. Um, me and Chris go back to like elementary school days, maybe like fourth grade. Um, but he recently created a short film. Um, and I feel like it's great whenever people follow their passion, um, you know, let their creativity shine. It's not easy to put yourself out there, but you know, he's created an awesome film. So to mean a lot, if you guys can just go check that out, I'll put the link in the description box and just go show him some support. So it is pretty late, almost 8.30, I'm just not getting home. Um, after class, I ended up staying after for a, what was it? A residency match panel, so the fourth year is that matched into the residency programs. They held a panel, so I went to that. Um, just not getting home. Um, actually, at my parents' house, I'm gonna try to get my car fixed this weekend. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up the vlog now. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to give it a thumbs up, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.